so the, session, the session is now being recorded. So hopefully you both have Scratch um, installed. And if you've downloaded Spider Start, you'll see what I have here. You can show me with a smiley face if you're there or frowny face if you need to wait for a few minutes for you to get that. Okay, good. Oh, we lost the other person. He disappeared. Okay. Now, uh, Megan, do you have experience drawing your own sprites? I wasn't going to cover that, but I can if you need me to. I actually have not used Scratch lately. It's been about six months. And, and um, so I just need to get back on the bike here. Okay, no problem. Um, I'm going to be drawing, some, doing some simple drawings later, so I'm going to skip that for now. And what I'm going to show you is one of the cool things about Scratch, if you're used to Seymour Papert's work or heard of Logo, he worked with kids with computers back in the 60s, and he had them great. He, so you're familiar with that. He, he had a, the program a robot turtle, and he created turtle graphics and Logo as a programming language. And so one of the nice things about Scratch is it has this pen category, and you can use. And my daughter made a, a spider instead of a turtle for me, which I like actually better since what we're making looks sort of like webs. So she said, well, a turtle's not so great. Why don't you make a spider? And actually, a spider is easier to draw in Scratch. So that's what we did is we made the spider. So we're going to have this spider do some drawing. And one of the first things that uh, Zebra Papert would have kids do is be something simple like just draw a square. So we're going to have this spider draw a square. And if we go into the, uh, what we want it to do is go forward. So that's a motion. So he would, Seymour would often have the kids walk it out. What does it mean to draw a square? So he'd have the kids walk forward, then turn right, and then walk forward, then turn right. And then he could teach them about loops. And so I'm going to go ahead and jump to a loop here, a repeat from the control area, the orange control area, get out a repeat four so we can repeat four times. And then from the blue motion, we're going to move forward. And I'm going to move forward 20 steps rather than 10. And if you haven't used Scratch in a while, the way that you change a number is just click on the number and then type the new number. And then we're going to turn 90 degrees to the right in order to make our square. And if I just do that, well, I can't tell if it actually drew the square. So we're going to add the pen down so that it draws first. And now we see our little square there behind the spider. I'm actually going to, I can also hide under looks. I can hide my spider after it does the drawing. Oops. And now I just see my square. And so just making a simple square, you might say, oh, that's pretty easy. But this makes, lets you make now art by combining it. And what we can do, one of the nice features of Scratch too, is to use broadcast and receive. Um, did you use that before, Megan? OK, and I see we have somebody else who joined us. Um, did, I hope you can see in the chat window I put where to grab this spider. This was the URL to go to. And let me bring it back up here again. What I want you to grab from there is uh, download spider art, spider uh, start. And then just open that up in Scratch. And that's what we're working with so far. And we haven't done a whole lot yet. We've just started with it. So we're going to make this. One of the features that you don't have in regular Scratch is the ability to make your own functions or methods. But you can do that by basically doing it when you receive a, a broadcast. So under Control, you can say, when I receive a broadcast message, I'm going to draw the square, and we're going to create a new broadcast message. So that was in the orange control structures. There's a when I receive down about the middle there. And we're going to say new, and I'm going to say when I receive square. Then I'm going to put the pen down and repeat four times, move 20 steps, turn 90 degrees, and that'll draw a square. And I can make a bigger square by changing this to 30 or 50 or 40. Let's make it 50 for now. We can see it real well. 
And at the end, I'm going to pull the pen up because you might want to move after you've drawn that square, and I don't want the turtle to keep doing it. So now we can say when the green flag is clicked, we could do something like uh, now call this. And the way that you send these messages is using broadcast. And I actually want to wait till you finish. So I'm going to say broadcast square and wait. So I hit the green flag. Oh, and I want to put a clear in here. I forgot about that. So one of the things that you want to have in pen is clear the screen when you start. So when the green flag is clicked, we'll clear the screen. Then we'll broadcast square and wait for that to draw. And then when I receive square, the pen will go down. We'll repeat four times, move, turn. So now I'll just draw a square. And that's not very artistic. But if we now draw that square in a loop and turn, we can make flowers out of it. So in a, and normally, of course, a circle is 360 degrees. So if we did a repeat 10 times, so we broadcast that square, and then we turn under motion, we turn not 15 degrees, but 36 degrees, we get a nice flower out of our square. So show me by smiley face, frowny face, if you understood that and want me to go over anything. Hi, Brenda. No, there's not an, what you basically have to do with Scratch is make sure you set it up always the way that you want it. So whenever the green flag is clicked, you should do any initialization to make sure that the world always goes back to that when the green flag is clicked. So I always recommend that people uh, put it, like if you want something to be in a particular place, that you put a go to that location right after the green flag is clicked and that you reset if you have, for example, if you're doing a game and you have a score, that you reset your score to zero. So you need to be responsible for all doing all the resetting. Yes, you can do the initialization with x and y coordinates under the motion here. Go to x0 so if I wanted to start a particular location. I have clear here with my green flag is clicked. I clear the screen, and then I could say go to a particular X and Y location. So that way, my flower is going to be in this right here in the center of the screen. Does that answer your question, Brenda? Yes, for each sprite, you should initialize when the green flag is clicked. So whatever setup you need to do. If you look at my uh, previous webinar, the webinar I did last, uh, where I did the game, yeah, then you can see how I did that. I made sure because it was a ball, it was a pumpkin falling, the witch was catching it. So to make sure that the pumpkin always started at the top, I first drag the pumpkin to where I want it to start. And when you do that, that, that go to XY location here gets set with those initial values. And so I'll know what it is. Great. Okay. So we're doing all right with this. Now you can draw, of course, different kinds of things by changing. Ah, the previous webinar is on, uh, let's see, go back to that page. Go to Safari. Go to my ice. So here, this is the uh, URL for all of my webinars. If you go there and then you go to the previous one was creating a simple game in Scratch. And here's the link to, so the last one was at this page. And you can watch that one and the slides that went with it are on the same page that I was having you download Spider Start from. So I had uploaded there for the previous webinars uh, the Scratch animation rubric, so grading rubric. An intro to Scratch, very short PowerPoint slides about getting people introduced to Scratch, and then a lesson plan for Scratch um, that covers quite a bit. And then Simple Which Game is the one that I did the last webinar. So the first webinar, I just did a sort of introduction to Scratch and how to make 2D animations. Sure, no problem. So if you go back to this site, this tells you all the webinars that we've done. Uh, so like if you're interested in Greenfoot, those are the links to those recordings. Uh, Dick Baldwin has a bunch of ones that he did. We did Grid World ones. If any of you are AP teachers, uh, Media Computation, I did a bunch. And those you need um, a key for and email me if you need the key because I don't want to say it on here since this will be a public recording. So for the Alice webinars as well. 
and I'm, we're right now in the middle of a, ses a session of four, a series of four webinars with Scratch. So this interactive art project is tonight. Great, no problem. All right, so now we've made this nice, um, and you can of course play with this, and we can change this by, let's say we can repeat 20 and do 18 degrees, and try that, and we'll get different kinds of flowers. So they make some pretty art. Sort of reminds me of Spirograph. Did you play with Spirograph when you were kids at all? Yeah, me too. And now we can also, one of the nice things I do to challenge kids usually is um, how do I use my spider to draw a triangle? Because if we're just uh, drawing a square and a triangle, we can even draw a house, we can draw a bunch of things. So to draw a triangle, we're going to use that same sort of, oh good, I'm glad to hear it. So when I receive, we're going to make a new thing when I receive the message triangle. We're going to do something very similar so we can actually, even I can throw that away actually, and, and use the stamp up here at the top, this thing that looks like a little stamp, and I can use that to copy. And then I can say, hey, create a new one triangle. And because we're going to be doing some things that are the same, we're going to put the pen down, put the pen up at the end. We're not going to do this repeat four times, so I'll pull that out. We are going to move and turn. So for the triangle, we want to start off with a triangle, and I'm going to grab for a moment another sprite um, under things. There is a pencil sprite that we're going to use later that already has a drawing script associated with it. And where's my pencil showing up? Hello, where's my pencil? There it is. So I'm just going to draw a simple triangle. And what we're going to try to do now, if we want to draw this equilateral triangle, we need, if we assume that the spider is facing straight up to start with, so straight up here, we need to know what the angle is for here. And we know that the interior angles of an equilateral triangle are all 60. So, oh boy, I can't draw 60 very well with this. So we know that this is 90 degrees, so 90 minus 60 would be 30. So we want to turn 30 degrees to the right. Oops, and I want to go back to my spider here. And we want to turn 30 instead of 90 there. And we want to do that first before we move. Then we're going to draw the first line, so 50 is fine. Now, we want to, now we'd be facing here, and we want to turn this amount. And we know that a complete line is 180, and that interior angle is 60. So 180 minus 60 would be 120. And this is good to have them figure out. Uh, they often make mistakes with it, and they use interior angles instead of exterior. So this is a good one for them to figure out. So we're going to turn 30, do our first line. We have to turn 120. When we get to the bottom of this line, we have the same problem. We have to turn 120. So I can even stamp those two and add them again. And then we'll draw that last line. And then we want to turn to face up again. So we'll finish by facing, turning 90 at the end. 